Hello everyone, we are here in our second interview for the day of the UNESCO Center for Peace Summer Program. We are delighted to have you here and especially with the guest speaker that provoked such a uh, touching feeling of empowerment in the girls and boys here in our program. I am Irene Luna Garcia, Youth Ambassador for UNESCO Center for Peace in Mexico and it is an honor to have you here. Ms. Mrs. Lucy is the founder and CEO of L'Emergence de l'Entrepreneur. Um, she uh, provoked such a beautiful emotion of empowerment in our participants today. Um, the conference was so touching, Mrs. Lucy, I enjoyed it very much. I never expected for, for the delegates to be so into it, participating so hardly for them to write messages and messages in the chat. And I, I hope that, that you enjoyed it very much. Um, so, um, Mrs. Lucy, we'll, we'll start with the, with the questions. So, okay. um, first of all, um, one experience that you shared with us that uh, left me amazed is that um, the girls that are most beautiful are sadly the ones that are less conscious of how beautiful they are and that you were one of them. Um, yes. and. And, and sadly, it, it is a pattern that it is repeating itself over and over again. So on that matter, I know that we did the affirmations with Scarlett in the conference, but which like uh, advice or ultimate advice would you share with us for this, especially for these girls, uh, for them to feel empowered and know that they are such beautiful and so unique and most of all so important? The first thing I will say, thank you so much for having me here um, once again. And, um, you know, it was great. It was great for, for me to be able to share my personal experience um, uh, with you. Um, and one thing that I would say right away is please um, put yourself in a position where you are influenced by people who believe in themselves because it's very contagious. Like I said in the conference, um, negativity is, con is contagious, but positivity is contagious as well, okay? So you have to make sure that you, you, you stay where, you know, you, you get, you stay actually where people believe in themselves, where people do great things, because it's going to pull you up. You know, it's going to show you what you can do. It's going to allow you to see, um, to see your, the things that you can actually accomplish now. When it comes to your physical uh, beauty and everything, um, it's it's all right here in the mind. Okay, um, actually, the reality is the if you have um, people, friends, or you know, maybe maybe your girlfriends or your neighbors or stuff like that who tell you that you're not a beautiful person, actually, most mostly um, most of the time they actually see how beautiful they are. And they, but they try to tell you the um, the opposite because they want to break their, your spirit. So you have to be careful. <laughs> you have to be careful. Only listen to the people who believe in you, and that's it. If someone doesn't believe in your potential and you and the things that you have to offer to the world, stay away from them. Literally, okay. Stay away from them, please. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, like there's there's no reason for you to be around people that don't empower you and that don't bring up something good in you. Um, so Samuel, uh, we're very happy to have you back. The, the, the floor is yours. You may ask your question and present yourself. All right, um, Samuel continues having problems with his internet, so um, we, we may continue. Mm -hmm. um, so um, on that matter, I know that it is very easy to say it and very hard to do it. Um, um, I was actually, um, when I was in junior high school, I was actually bullied um, um, because ap apparently the girls in my classroom didn't didn't thought that I was worthy of their respect and of their love. But um, on that matter, and I feel this is something that sadly we are lacking even more right now, is communication. When I faced um, that experience, I didn't tell, told, told my parents. It was one of the uh, one of my classmates, a mother that told my mom, and she was like, "I really is facing this situation. Do you know?" Um, so, uh, on that matter, um, as you say, social media has provoked such a, 
a unique pressure on teenagers and yes, it has yes. provoked us to get into ourselves and not and want to communicate our feelings to communicate how how are we facing these situations so yeah. on that matter um, if you may tell us a little bit of your experience i think it would be very enriching and also how do these girls in the 21st century with social media can can do it and and, and face it yes yes and i i feel you i'm telling you i grew up with no social media and sometimes when i I see what's going on on social media and the, the way it affects even adults. I feel really sad. It's, it's sad. Um, but everything takes time. Listen, everything um, worth having is going to take time. Um, what value do you put on, on, your, on your health? What value, value do you put on your mental health? Um, your mental health also. Um, if you cherish those things, if you cherish your, your peace in your heart, I recommend that you, you practice, you practice. And those young girls, that's actually one of the reasons why I, I was talking about exercising. Because when you exercise, I mean, I will tell you, me, for example, that's one of my key secrets. I forgot to tell them that. I mean, I told them at the conference that, of course, they should exercise because it's good, it's good for your brain, for your, 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 your health and in, in, in your mind. But I forgot to tell them that um, it's actually, it's going to boost your mood. It's going to change um, the things that you, the way you see yourself. Every single time I run, it creates something in me. Like the minute I, I get home, I feel I feel like I can, you know, nothing, you can tell me anything. <laughs> I feel strong. I feel empowered. My mood is up here. I feel like it, it that's one of the things that you guys can do. Walk out, like, like, like I said, right. First of all, please try to stay away from social media. Okay. You, if you can shut all that thing, um, you're going to feel so much better. And then when, when it's off, work on yourself. Um, try to find people who believe what you believe. Encourage each other. Um, walk out. Eat healthy because once your body feels good, if you feel good about yourself, it's going to be projected in the way you you present yourself in front of people. Okay, it's definitely it it it's a whole other game. Like once you start walking out, you start seeing the, some changes in your body. Um, the way it's going to feel is going to create some energy and that is definitely going to um, allow you to 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 uh, to show up differently in the world. Like when you but have you noticed um, that people who usually walk out, they have a different like a different energy when they walk in the room. It's not that they've. They, 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 it's like when, when they walk in the room you know they're there like they don't even have to say anything there's kind of like some type of charisma about them it comes from the fact that when you take care of yourself you don't even have to say you don't have to to force it it comes naturally so please try that i'm not talking about lo um, losing weight and all that stuff i'm talking about how you feel in your body because your body is a temple and your spirit has to feel comfortable to stay there, okay? Or it's going to leave. So you have to make sure that you you take care of this body, you take care of it so that your your spirit wants to stay there. And that's what you have to do. Thank you. And yeah, one thing maybe I can add, um, and I hope maybe that this can help you is, do you know that um, the people who, um, the way... People, the, the way um, social media works, um, people just to present them, themselves, just to to pretend to be what they're not, sometimes, and I would say often, they post things that are not true. Do you understand? Like you will see people who are going to say, oh, this is who I am, or that's what I do. But sometimes they're not doing it. I remember there's a lady, last year that i saw um she said <clears throat> that on instagram she has to she sees people posting stuff that sometimes she feels like she feels the need to fake it and she will take her luggage she's not going anywhere though she doesn't even have 
money to go anywhere. And she would take her luggage and she would go at the door and take a picture and post on social media and say, well, I'm going to Paris or I'm going to, to Las Vegas or whatever, stuff like that. She posts it and when she's done, she goes back, she's go, she goes back to sleep. So things like that are really ridiculous. But the, the, person, the, the young teenager or the young adult or the kids who doesn't know those things, who doesn't know that people are actually pretending, they believe that stuff and they start thinking that their life is miserable or not, nothing is going on. When in fact, most of the time, 90% of the things that people post on social media are fake, okay? If you know that, then you know that don't, just don't listen to that stuff, okay? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now um, we have uh, Mr. Giddy Jokin joining us, the Executive Director of UNESCO Center for Peace. Um, and we have Samuel Cabrera, I um, hope that your connection is getting better. So um, now we may continue with some questions with them, but Mrs. Lucy, you have such an empowering vision and I wish that these girls could recognize the beauty in them as you, as I know that you went through such a process for you to recognize it. And now that you have reached a point in which you can even empower other girls to do it. So I, I admire you for that. And I am really happy for people like you uh, to be in contact with our delegates. Um, so uh, Mr. Gidi Joken, uh, the floor is yours. You, you may do a question. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Lucy. Uh, again, uh, earlier in the group, the last, uh, young girl from china i think was uh, i think was very remarkable the way you answer her question her insecurity the fact that uh, she wasn't sure about herself and the fact you were able to to get her to project the image of the person she wanted to be mm -hmm. and uh, i want you because this uh, you know those listening here are not necessarily those who were in the room i want you to really uh, talk a little bit about that how uh, you know ex you know what am I talking about? I want you to tell people what I'm talking about and then how the, uh, your answer were able to, to be well received uh, by the whole group because I've been receiving all the, the feedback about that. Yes, uh, we were talking about, and um, we were talking to Scarlett, Scarlett from China, mm -hmm. who said uh, she she has a hard time believing in herself um, and she, she, she has a lot of uh, negative talk in her in the back of her mind and uh she doesn't know how to get rid of it and i actually shared with with her that i was the same way and even now i have to fight that that stuff you know sometimes you know bad habits want to come back all the time but i i'm a fighter and i consider myself as a fighter and i'm not going to let anything um slowing me down because i know exactly where i'm going and that's what i'm tr i was trying to explain to her and um what I, what I was explaining to her that she needs to is that she needs to be able to um, first of all write down her vision, the things that she really wants to accomplish in her life. She said she wants to be an actress. Now, as a as a future actress, you have to definitely you have to be you you have to be self confident because you're gonna be on stage. You know, you're gonna be on stage acting. What type of actress is gonna be like this? And this is self confidence is so important, guys. Like, I mean, if you don't have self confidence, you're selling me stuff, and I'm not buying. Okay, I'm not buying yeah. anything you sell because if you don't believe in your product yourself, why do why do you want me to buy it? Okay, I don't, I'm not buying if you're not, if you, if I tell you, um, okay, you know what, this water is good for you, blah, 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 and you don't, you don't believe that, why are you going to buy it? I can come and say, listen, this is the best water ever. You need this or you're going to die. <laughs> There's a okay, difference. Can I get it? <laughs> <laughs> so my point here is think about what you really want to do in life, write it down. We already explained to you how to find your purpose. And once you're done with that, write it down on a paper, open your mouth and start saying that you are what you want to become in your life in the future. Don't say, oh, um, you know, I'm going to say it, say it in the present tense when I get there. No, that's too late, okay? Success is not a destination, it's a process. You do not reach success like that. You become a success as you go every single day. You can't just say, well, I'm going to be successful in 10 years. No, 
If you want to become successful in 10 years, you have to start right now. Listen, if you want to become an attorney, like a very successful attorney, start acting like a very successful attorney will act. If you want to become um, a successful politician, then start acting that way. Start dressing up the, the, the part. Start making sure that you iron your clothes. Start making sure that you talk like a, like a very successful politician. Start making sure that you avoid doing certain, certain stuff. You have to stop the, the, the small talks here and there. You have to focus. You have to study what the successful politicians do and do just that. Read their books. Like pick one politician that you admire the most and read uh, his biography, for example, and, and, and work on on, on, on whatever the, 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 uh, he has, I mean, I mean, on yourself so that you can actually become uh, not exactly like him because you can never be <laughs> exactly like someone else. Because remember I said, you have your own gift, but at least that's the way you are. Success is not going to come by, by staying here and say, well, when I come back tomorrow, like in next 10 years, this is what I want to become. Make sure you open your mouth and you say, this is who I am. I'm a very successful politician. I'm a very successful entrepreneur. I'm a very successful speaker. I'm a very successful actress. And you say it and you say it every single day you wake up in the morning, you go in front of a mirror, mirror and you look at yourself. Oh my God, this is, this is the deal. I'm the lawyer I'm talking about. Okay. Trust me. It works wonders. I did it. <laughs> I did it. Okay. I think it was great to see you applying that formula. And I could tell from at the end, she even looked more confident when you start. Yes, you know, yes. And she, had, and, her, and, uh, and she yeah. had a smile on her face because, and, and you know what happened? I could see how heavy. Did, uh, have you noticed that it was heavy at the beginning? She couldn't say yes. it because, yeah. because she's not used to it, unfortunately. She couldn't even answer your question. Like, uh, yes. But at yes, the end, you could yes. See that she yes. was a, a new person. Yeah. Okay. I'm so happy for her. I know um, if she applies this, uh, uh, she's going to see a huge shift in the way she thinks about herself. And that's going to be uh, different. But she's going to have to practice and know that, listen, we believe in you. You know, we just just go ahead and do it. Thank you. Thank oh you very gosh. much. Yeah. Look like we're having oh. some challenges, but uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Samuel, uh, sadly, his connection, he could, he could not manage to make it work. So um maybe we can make for him to participate with the interview in the interview with your son and daughter but um he will not be participating for now um so uh we may continue um so so yes on on that matter i i do approve on the fact that affirmations are are powerful and you uh, being the part um like um like like for me um you like the, all not all the chairs are formal but on the whole summer program is formally because i i like to feel that way and uh for me i want to get into politics so i so it helps me um but also a phrase that uh, really captured uh my attention for the the delegate from team Book, from team book two is uh, start what you are use what you have do what you can um yeah. And I, I think that is such a powerful way. And especially um, because on our summer program, um, sadly the stereotype um, is, is reflecting that uh, most of our African delegates have been having a lot of problems to connect uh, mm -hmm. to the conferences, to the meetings, to the sessions. Mm -hmm. So I would like uh, for, for you to, to give them a message and how can you apply uh, this phrase on your everyday life and, and, and take advantage of your resources. Okay. Again, use what you have, do what you can. And um, you, you, this is, this is how it works. We, it means that if you live in a country where um, there, they, the, the, for example, the internet connection is not that that's good. You can actually record things. It's simple. You can actually record things and go ahead and uh, record, download um, videos, for example, of programs that or teachings that you, you like and that are very important to you. You can sit down with a group of people, maybe with your team, with your, with your small team, the group of people that you want to grow with, and you watch with them. That is so key. People sometimes don't think about details like that, okay? Um, you don't have to be connected directly all, all the time to the, to the information. You can download it if you can, if you, if you have access to that. And 
and then watch it later. Um, you can also um, try to, you know, to, you have to you have to to try um, to like stop. You have to stop comparing yourself and your country to other countries all the time because sometimes the frustration comes from there. Okay, um, there is a reason why those people who are, for example, what his name again, uh, Mohammed. There is a reason why he was born over there. Maybe he's going to be the solution for those problems. Maybe him and other pre or other people, other other groups of, groups of people who actually have the vision to see things um, better. Um, there is a reason why you were born in a country in the country where you are. Um, and <laughs> I had a mentor who used to say, um, he used to say, God did not give us chairs and tables and 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 bears and things what he did was he gave us the trees and he hid the tree that he, he hid the chairs the tables and the beds in the tree does that mean do you understand what i mean by that when yeah. i mean by, you understand what i mean right like when he said he says god didn't give human beings bed chairs tables but he hid all of those things in the tree which means we have to start thinking a little bit differently and say you know what what can I do to transform my life by using what I have right now? Um, even if I cannot have this level of success right now because of the country um, where I live, uh, because, you, know, in, you know, the country I live in now, what can I do to help my people get at least from one step to another one? You know, um, those type of questions, it usually starts with asking yourself questions. And like what like we're talking uh, uh, with Mr. Joking on the other line, um, when you ask yourself questions and you focus on the right thing and you focus on what matters, the answers will show up, I promise you. For some reason, I don't know how it works, but it always does. It, it's funny because not only people are going to start navigating to you, toward you, to help you fulfill your goals. Um, you know what? Let me put it this way. Have you noticed because this is an example that's going to help you understand this. If you, if you, if you don't, let's say for example, you're driving a Toyota Corolla. Okay, I know. Are, are you a driver? Do you drive already? No, so no. Not yet. He's that's fine. That's years fine. That's fine. Real, that's some point. Uh, a few yeah, months away. So, okay, that's fine. But I'm gonna share that. Just uh, it's an analogy that you have to understand. If you are. Um, it's actually that if you if you if someone drives, for example, a Toyota Corolla and doesn't pay attention to other 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 uh, brands, this that's fine. But as soon as the person sees a BMW, for example, or a Mercedes, and they start paying attention to that, immediately, like like all of a sudden, that becomes a reality to them. Not that those those uh, models and those make were not ex they didn't exist before. It's just that. They, it's all it's all that they, uh, their awareness was brought to that. So in the same way, because now, because of the connection that you guys have through UNESCO Center for Peace, um, you, uh, you have access to some type of information and that's going to stir uh, your mind. That's going to create uh, the need to learn more. And that's what, and, and once your, your awareness is already awakened, there's no going back. And those people who live in places where um, they they can't find the information, they're definitely going to keep looking and looking, and and that's what they, you do in your country. Look around, look around. What can you do differently so that you know it doesn't have to be exactly like here in the West, but right now, what can you do to change just at least for a little bit so that it's the change is not going to be like sudden. You can't have like a brutal change. You can never go from from this from le uh, level one to level 100 in one day it's going to take step it's going to take small steps and then you can do maybe your part from one to five and then someone else is going to pick up where you left and go further and so on and so on for example mr gijo can the work that he's doing right now it's a lot of work i know his goal his his dream is is bigger than what you guys can see. But I know for a fact that he cannot fulfill this alone, okay? And even after, but, but, the, but the good thing about this is he created something, he created a system, and when he's no longer there, 
someone else is going to have to continue this work because that's how it works. That's what you do when you live in a country where you don't have the means to do everything. Do a little bit, just a little bit. And one day someone is going to come and do another, and, and take it to the next level, so on and so on, until we're going to get the result we're looking for. Yes. Okay, yes. I think you, you said it all. You put it very, pretty well. And uh, it's uh, been a very interesting journey. Um, okay with you the uh, the last question i'm going to ask you uh, it's a very personal one and uh, i'm ready to to take some punches <laughs> How, what is the recipe to having two amazing kids the way you know two amazing authors uh, the way the two wonderful kids you have so that, just tell us the recipe how you do that <sighs> wow um i think it's work and i believe in them like i believe in all the youth that we were, we were talking about today i believe in them um um it requires a lot of sacrifices which means i mean of course grace but there's a lot of work here there's a lot of um restrictions uh we don't have the cable tv at home for example we don't have it we we turned it off 10 years ago <laughs> it's true we turned it off because i my husband and i always felt at a certain point when we decided to look at ourselves in the mirror in this country. We said, okay, we are both immigrants. Uh, we don't even speak English at all. We're just trying. Um, um, people who were born in this country have an edge. And we said to ourselves, listen, um, we're not going to spend the little money that we have to pay for cable. And we, I, I always, I started to feel like we were... I was paying for my own distraction. I have stuff to do. And I, I looked around and I was like, I don't know how those people do this. And I don't know how these people do that. And I started to have asked those questions myself. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should turn the TV off because every single time I, I turn on the TV, I'm so depressed after. And I think that created the fact that, that it's the fact that we shut it off. It allowed us to have a little more time um, the kids didn't like it, of course, because they love it. <laughs> but in the meantime, they started to to get rid of it. Now they don't even care anymore. Uh, because after 10 years, I mean, my son is what? He's 16. My daughter is 12. They look, they actually imagine 10 years ago, she was two. And 10 years ago, he was, um, he was what? No, he, she, oh, no, sorry. 10 years ago. Yeah, she was two. And 10 years ago, he was, um, he was uh, six, right? six, exactly. So you can can you imagine these two kids grow up with no TV? Of course, they at, when they turn twelve, we bought them cell phones, but it's different. You know, they don't have that access to distraction that much, and I think it helps a lot because um, when I tell when I listen when I tell people that TV and social media is those especially social media, it's a huge distraction to teenagers. I know what I'm talking about because teenagers are very fragile. They tend to um, pay attention to what's going on left and right and the peer pressure. Um, but if you can manage to guide your your kid and put the right information in front of them, they're going to follow the right information. We go to the library, we read books. Um, they have friends, but you know, we check the friends that they have. We make sure that they don't have fake friends or wrong friends or people who are going to lead, lead them to stuff. And then they, they read a lot. And by and when you know what we choose the we, we actually we we give them the type of books that are is going to stir um in their mind the the, 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 the the actually it makes them hungry. You see, yeah, that curiosity, the curiosity exactly. So that's why um I think that's that's it helps a lot. I, I'm not gonna take credit for all this. I have to say. The type of books that they're reading and then the coaching and mentoring at home and that's how and finally we have two authors we have two authors and <laughs> this is amazing i know i don't know if, uh, i really would like to 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 sneak in and tell us you know when will they you be i know that you'll be interviewing the kids right so do you when and how when yeah so um we are having an interview um with uh mrs lucy son i I am hope I am saying their their names right. Um, Elikia, uh, Elikia Rachel, and Greg Daniel. It's going to be today at 7 p.m. EST. So we are waiting for everyone to join us. Um, these kids, like they like writing a book at the age of 12, is just <laughs> remarkable. 
Um, <laughs> and what is the topic again? Like What's the topic of the book? Uh, her, her, her first, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah her right. first, yeah, her first book was um, "Who Says Kids Can Cook." Exactly, I knew that. <laughs> it, yeah, she she was actually challenging the adult, like. What do you guys think? You think we can't do anything? Okay, here we go. And, yes. uh, and, also, and then, and uh, and then the, the second one is, yeah, the second book is on, um, it's the, the, they, they wrote it together. It's King COVID-19. Uh, okay. It's about COVID-19. It's amazing. I think I have it here. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing book. But okay, that, please. yeah. That's wonderful. Okay. It is such a book. It's, it's, a, it's actually for, um, for kids, uh, elementary school, uh, and that's it. Like it's it's explained things about COVID nineteen and and uh, how you know it's 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 a great book. It's all yes. I I don't even know what to say. It's amazing. Let's just say it. <laughs> okay. So you see, I couldn't help myself, but to put you on the you know my last question, I could not help. I'm sorry about that, but you know you have to. No, come out. fine. That's mm -hmm. fine. That's fine. Okay. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Your your conference, your presence, you you have that presence and that special energy to you. We very much enjoyed connecting with you, and I hope that uh, we keep in touch, and especially for UNESCO Center for Peace, because kids need to hear your word. I need to hear your message. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lucy. My okay, pleasure. the last thing I didn't say earlier, but once you join us in any of our program, we become part of the family. So, you know, in family, we don't say we are coming, we don't schedule, we just knock at the door, talk, talk, talk. So be ready for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.